ABC Kinder Teach presents Grand Canyon, written by Jason Chin. This is an interactive version with an emphasis on vocabulary. Due to the content density of this book, only vocabulary development will be explored in this interactive version. Grand Canyon is one of the largest canyons in the world. And this is a canyon right there. It's home to an astonishing and amazing variety of plants and animals. The canyon is much hotter and drier at the bottom than at the top. Because of this, different groups of plants and animals or ecological communities are found at different elevations. And elevations are just different heights above the ground, like there's an elevation, there's an elevation, there's an elevation. The hottest part of the canyon is at the very bottom, a thousand foot deep chasm. And a chasm might look like this. Called the Inner Gorge. The Inner Gorge may be the hottest part of the canyon, but there are oases in this desert, which means there's places in dry areas with water and plants. Creeks, small rivers, bring life-giving water to the gorge, like a very narrow canyon, and a wide variety of species, different groups of living things like people, foxes, cats, roses, and oak trees, live along their banks, including frogs, dragonflies, mule deer, and the endangered southwestern willow fly catcher. Many of these creatures, or animals, are permanent residents that rely on running water for survival, while others are visitors drawn here by their thirst. Eventually, every creek in the canyon flows into the largest stream of all. The Colorado River. The Colorado runs the entire length of Grand Canyon continually, without stopping, washing sediment, tiny pieces of rock and dirt, away and slowly deepening its channel, the path that the river takes. This is the Grand Canyon, 1.2 billion years ago when the only living things on Earth were microbes, very tiny living things, such as algae and bacteria. Although they were too small to see, these primitive organisms, a living thing that is very simple, not like people, filled the oceans and were some of the earliest life forms on the planet. The mud from this tidal flat, where rivers drop sand, tiny rocks, and mud, eventually transformed, changed very much over a long period of time, into a layer of solid rock, and these ripple marks were preserved in the process. They are now part of the Grand Canyon Supergroup. After climbing out of the inner gorge, you'll find yourself in a broad sun-baked slope, maybe something that looks like this. The plants and animals here are well adapted, changed so that they are able to live for life with little water. Black-throated sparrows can go for long periods of time without taking a drink. Many creatures sleep during the heat of the day. Pocket mice forage or hunt and look for food at night and are preyed upon, hunted by owls and rattlesnakes who are adapted for hunting in the dark.
This is Grand Canyon 515 million years ago. By this time in Earth's history, many multicellular plants, more complicated living things, and animals had evolved, changed over a long period of time. Towering over, much taller than, the bright angel shale is a massive cliff. A massive cliff might look like this, called the Red Wall Limestone. The Red Wall has many inaccessible, you can't get to them very easily, that provide nesting spots for one of the rarest birds in the world, the California condor. Above the Red Wall Cliff is a slope of rust red rock. The climate here the typical weather in an area over a long period of time, is not as hot and dry as below, and pinyon pines and Utah junipers are common. Many creatures such as squirrels, chipmunks, and wood rats eat their seeds. These small rodents, animals like mice, rats, and squirrels that gnaw on things, are preyed on, hunted, by gopher snakes and coyotes. This is Grand Canyon 280 million years ago. By this time, life was flourishing, growing easily, on land and trees, ferns, fish, amphibians, animals like frogs who breathe underwater at first and then on land, and reptiles had evolved. The sea had retreated, stopped moving forward and started backing up, from the region, a big piece of land, and rivers flowed across the landscape, the things that can be seen on a piece of land. Seed ferns and conifers grew along their banks and amphibians left their tracks in the mud, mud that eventually transformed into the hermit formation. Above the red slopes of the hermit are pale 350 foot cliffs, Bighorn sheep easily navigate, figure out how to get from one place to the next. Their narrow ledges with specially adapted hooves. In the fall mating season, sheep get together to have babies. Males compete for dominance. They try to show the girl sheep who is the strongest. By smashing into each other with their battering, hitting hard, ram horns. These cliffs have been carved from the Coconino sandstone. Fossil footprints in the rock tell us that on this spot 275 million years ago, an early reptile walked across huge windswept dunes. This might be what a windswept dune would look like. With little water, life here would have been difficult, but the desert wasn't entirely barren without any plants. As you approach the rim of the canyon, and this is the rim, kind of the top outer edge, the climate becomes cooler and more moist. Vegetation, plants are growing there, on the sloping Toro Weep formation is more dense than below, thicker than below. Before exiting or leaving the canyon, however, there is one more layer to scale, the Kebab formation. Fossils in the Kebab formation tell us of a complex ecosystem a group of living things living together in a particular place. If you ascend from the Colorado River to the south rim of Grand Canyon, you will have climbed nearly 5,000 feet and passed through three distinct habitats, the different places where living things call home. the grandest canyon on earth. It's taken millions of years of weathering when rocks and other things get worn down by the weather over a long time and erosion to expose these rocks, shape this breathtaking landscape and these processes continue to this day. 
relentlessly without stopping, excavating, creating holes and ditches.